Uh, my uh, deliberate work today is uh, technological transformation in food and vegetable strategy. Uh, why I choose this topic? Uh, basically, fruit and vegetable. Uh, uh, basically, I uh, start with uh, one uh, report from Economic Survey 2015 16, where it says that uh, fruits and vegetables were are the, are the key driver of this particular of this agriculture sector in India. Uh, Basically, production of 7% enhancement is achieved only by 2.7% area expansion of horticultural crop, which basically outweighs all other agricultural production in 2012-13. And since then, foods and vegetables become the major producer and major contributor in the agricultural sector. Uh, this uh, is particularly taken from uh, uh, the site of Semo API, Ministry of uh, Food Policy and Industry, where they state that there are top five, five vegetable producing states among them, West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh. Basically, that depends upon how much uh, potato production is there in that particular year. If uh, West Bengal produces more potato, they come fast. If Uttar Pradesh produces more, more uh, potato, they come fast in vegetable production. Uh, we have produced almost around 315 million tons of fruits and vegetables in 2018 19, and we exported to the tune of almost 12.75 million US dollars in 1920. And the major of this, uh, majority of this export were to Bangladesh, UAE, Netherlands, Sri Lanka, Oman, and Qatar. Now, this is where the importance of food and vegetables are there, and that is why I chose this particular topic. And again, when we, when we talk about packaging, then the most challenging packaging is in food and vegetables. That is the most challenging part of any packaging science in food and vegetables. Because in all other kind of packaging, mostly we deal with dead material, those does not have life. But when we deal with food and vegetables, they have life. So that is the most challenging one. And they interact with the packaging material. So I chose this particular talk. Okay. Now here again, this is the statistic of wasted of food and uh, vegetables. The, from uh, Ministry of Food Policy Industry side. This is 4.58 to 15.88 percentage. Including all kinds of vegetables. Just remember that potato is a major contributor out of this 350 million tons. Almost about 55 to 60 million tons is potato. Now, of this potato, we have a very good, uh, I would uh, say, a very reasonable post harvest infrastructure in the country. So, wastage in potato is very less. But contributing, taking in, for potato into contribution, we have 15.88 percentage of wastage of food and vegetables. If we consider individual community, we will see the percentage wastage is somewhere near, near about 30 to 40 percent, which is near a basic concern. Uh, coming to uh, packaging industry, if we see that there is a scope of PAGR, we say cumulative annual close rate of around near, nearly about 30 percent. In last five, in the coming five years, from 2020 to 2026, the growth rate of packaging industry is supposed to increase by 30 percent. And the third one is very important statement: consumers are likely to purchase fresh produce through e-commerce and online retail stores. Now, one one is the popularization of e-commerce, and other one is the popularization of fresh food and vegetables. Because of two very important aspects, one is the livelihood security and third one, uh, second one is the hidden anger, hidden anger, what, what we call as a nutritional security. So to address these two issues, food and vegetables become very important uh, in order to in order to alleviate the hidden hunger problem. So in one way, food and vegetables becoming becoming popular 
particularly colored food and vegetables, and in second way, the e-commerce is becoming popular. So both these, both these basically require a very good packaging solution to distribute throughout the country, anywhere in the country. Okay, so that is what is uh, I mean, uh, another point of uh, this thing. And one very important uh, statement I have taken from the uh, Reliance Education and PDS by also Gulati. They say horticulture. Horticulture, there is a very, very less uh, uh, demand in the city of cereal. Okay. That means you, if you produce more cereals, you are, they are not going to be consumed. If I give you more cereal, more rice, more wheat, you are not going to consume. But if I give you fruits and vegetables in larger quantity, you are supposed to, I mean, uh, the, 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 that's the market for you. But that is why he said, cereal have very uh, limited, uh, I mean, uh, demand elasticity, whereas fruits and vegetables are basically the key, key driver in if we, if we want to achieve the uh, targeted, targeted food person growth in agricultural sector. And agriculture, uh, horticulture as a whole contribute around 33% of the total agricultural economy. Now coming to uh, pack versus packet, uh, I have given two uh, pictures, one is the uh, packet of incense and another is the fresh cut food and vegetables. Now the difference is basically first one is packed and second one is packed. Packed means it is contained, it is protected, but it is not air. And the second one that is packed is, it is protected, it is contained, it is protected, it is air. So this basically is the difference between what when we talk about packed item and packaged item. So when we talk about food and vegetables, they need they need care to be I mean to be distributed safely to a consumer. Basically, when we talk about packaging, we talk about different functions. So that is uh, the basic part of it. Uh, I have listed four major functions. There could be many means this can be further subdivided. You can subdivide this uh, major function. One is protection, the commodity that is put into the packet has to be protected. Second one is the containment, it has to contain the product that is the main purpose of the uh, packaging material. Convenient, it should give you a lot of convenience when you go, buy, and bring the packet. You should be able to carry it to your home. And promotion, that is very important aspect of packaging, that it is able to promote your product. If I say pineapple from Delphi Bui, if I, if I uh, put uh, pineapple from Delphi Bui to Delhi in a track load, there is not, there are not, nothing there is, that is bigger than the these pineapple is from Delphi Bui uh, uh, being sold at the uh, market of uh, Delhi. So they don't know where from this particular pineapple came. But when it goes in a packet with proper leveling, they know this particular pineapple has come from Delphi Guri. So they, have, they start giving value to that particular product. So it's kind of promotion without without uh, employing any 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 sales capacity, the packet itself can promote your business. So in that sense, this is the major four uh, uh, four major four functions of package I uh, normally talk about. Okay, now as I was uh, initially mentioning that challenge is in, in, in packaging the major challenge in packaging of food and vegetables. In all other kind of products to have a inert material, like say you want to pack a bulb into a package. So both are inert material, there is practically no interaction. But when you talk about packaging, of fruit and vegetables, the fruit being live, they are respiring like us, they are respiring, they are giving out carbon dioxide, taking oxygen, they are evaluating ethylene, which is basically a ripening hormone responsible for the ripening, they are transpiring, they are transpiring, means they are giving out water. Now, the package in which we are putting the product, it has to realize that the the, the material inside me is respiring, is transpiring, and producing ethylene. And this uh, community, they are also susceptible to microbial atoms. So there is an interaction between the packaging material that is there and the product that is put into it. So unless there is a proper interaction, 
Apple, they are packaging input the way to do it. So, it's very challenging one. We need to address that. And in terms of packaging, we are, if we uh, see this thing, for packaging, enough mechanical strength so that it can give sufficient protection to the commodity. It suffers to be smooth so that if any rough surface is there, it is going to hurt the uh, food and vegetables. Cost of material is very important aspect because if you if, if you if you use very high cost material, you are going to lose the uh, profit margin. In fact, in the atmosphere, it has to the packaging material has to interact with the surrounding atmosphere and printability and traceability. Uh, printability means I already talked about you need to have proper information so that it, it does the job of promotion. And traceability is very important aspect nowadays because anything, anything goes wrong in abroad market that, that the, the, the seller or wholesaler need to identify who is the person uh, giving me a wrong package. Unless then, or uh, uh, in, in one way punishment, if something goes wrong, he can be punished if something goes good, then again you will be basically rewarded. So, traceability is very important uh, aspect of uh, packaging where the packaging material needs to be uh, good enough that it is printable and once it is printable, you can easily uh, improve feature like traceability. Uh, this just I have put something which is uh, what is future and beyond. Uh, we are uh, somewhere, probably we are all in all this space, but the scale is different. Earlier we used to see somebody, a farmer, go to the market, maybe roadside, sit with his maybe uh, 10 kg uh, tomato, but they say 7 kg, 3 kg, 3 kg back, and then he consumes it. Now, that situation is somewhat improved. In this first case, there was no implication. He did not collect material from the entire region so that he can make a good volume of business. So there was no implication. There was no grading practically. There was no packaging. And definitely this is not going to give you much value. In the second phase, so this just emerges at the ground level as he is sitting on the ground. So you imagine that to be at the ground level. Then somebody who integrated all the material grown, say, say bean or say, say brinjal, grown in an area, and some person goes there and collects all the brinjal, he basically integrates the material, he comes to the market and then sits on his platform, so it's a little bit higher. And then what he does is he sells it, he gets some profit from that. So integration, yes, he do some grading, packaging, again, no. This is what is normally we see nowadays. Convenient, definitely, again, there is no convenience. Then we move on to somewhat little higher, that is, uh, that is, that is uh, we see sometimes in the shopping mall. Beans, uh, uh, carrots, beans, brinjal, bindis are now packed, now packed, and are refrigerated in a shopping mall. And other level is where we assorted foods and vegetables are cut into pieces, make it ready to use or ready to cook, put it in a packet, and then put it in the cell, deviate itself. So this is where is we have already achieved. The last one is basically not much visible in our country, but it is already achieved. So technology is available and is being used in the market. Now, we have reached up to this, not in, again, not in large scale, but definitely to a uh, considerable volume and probably will be reaching maybe in next 5 to 10 years, we will be seeing this even in Palaka. So, uh, this is already we are, we are at, we have to reach there and probably there are something beyond that. Okay, so uh, all these, in all these places there are something added to it and as we add on, we increase the price. This is what I just uh, wanted to depict this four, uh, four uh, things. One is post loss. loss. post loss in the first case, the farmer was basically taking to the market and whatever returning back from the market, he was 
some good thing. Next, suppose I want to put 2% uh, of carbon dioxide, I want to use 8% of oxygen, and rest is matter. So I make a mixture of these gases, and then I blast that gas into the pan. So what happens when acting here, I have taken out the uh, gas as composition, and I have put a composition of mild here into the product. So that the product, let alone, it will uh, get there. In case of passive uh, atmospheric, uh, modified atmosphere, what we are doing is basically we just keeping the commodity and let the commodity interact with the uh, film. It could, be, uh, it could be a polyfilm, it could be a edible film or anything. So let, let that uh, commodity interact with the film and we don't do anything. And after certain time, there is a stabilization, there is a equilibrium disturbance between the carbon dioxide concentration and oxygen concentration inside the packet and outside the packet. Now this is what is uh, just listed out. I am not going to uh, get, uh, going into details of it. There are different kinds of polymer. Those are available commercially, and they have a different kinds of permit at 25 degrees Celsius. Suppose oxygen permittivity in case of the polypropylene, cast polypropylene, or the ACP. The 2600 is the oxygen permittivity per centimeter. Uh, 2600 centimeter per meters per of the permittivity per k. For uh, what is the atmospheric pressure is 1 at 25 degrees centigrade. And the carbon dioxide concentration is uh, carbon dioxide permeability is 1602. Normally, for a good modified atmospheric package spill, as you have a permeability ratio of carbon dioxide to oxygen to near about 5 to 10. So, if in that case, if you see carbon dioxide ratio, permeability ratio is uh, carbon dioxide permeability ratio to oxygen permeability ratio is between 5 to 10. You can you can think of that as a good film for to be used as a modified atmosphere package. Now these are the different of different commodity commodity to be stabilized at different concentration of oxygen, carbon dioxide, and nitrogen. Okay, that's what take, uh, that's what Banco will do here. It better uh, serve as three percent of oxygen, where it is almost one seventh down of what is the normal atmospheric pressure, twenty one percent to three percent, and carbon dioxide to five to eight percent. Now carbon dioxide is point three point zero three percent in the air, so it is almost around two hundred times higher than that. So likewise, we have uh, different commodities. And depending upon the type of commodity, we need to select a kind of film so that we can establish a good equilibrium for the product to be stabilized. Now, coming to edible coating, another very interesting. So, unless we are talking about polyfill, which is not edible. Now, we are talking about edible film. Edible film is nothing but to use any kind of polysaccharide or any kind of polymer, biopolymer. It's be it a uh, polysaccharide, be it a protein, be it a fat, or anything like that, which is normally a plant extract or plant derived uh, polysaccharide or protein, and you coat the food with that. Nowadays, if you go to the market, you see lots of market with uh, vaccine. There is a lot of that. There is nothing like that. I mean, uh, there is nothing funny uh, about that. You need to remove the wax that if it is not of petroleum. Uh, so now, if this crop is protected with the uh, with the with the uh, I mean uh, with the biopolymer, what will happen? It basically protects from the that establishment, so there will be a different carbon dioxide and oxygen permeability. It will be protecting it from the anti uh, microbial bacteria and fungi because we can always add any kind of antimicrobial to those polysaccharides so that they become a natural barrier for the for the product to be uh, from the anti uh, from the fungus or bacteria to attack the food. So this is what is uh, very I mean uh, interesting uh, areas of research and lot of uh, lot of edible protein material are already available in the uh, in the in the world. So these are the different kinds of protein material we are talking about. Uh, we have polysaccharide, we have plant or protein extract, we have liquid, we have Aso industry OS, we have uh, composite material. Now, in polysaccharide, there are many, like different gums. Uh, we have uh, talked about acacia gum. Babur. 
uh, antimicrobial property and protect the food and beverage. Now, uh, there are different kinds of active packaging. Now, this is again a very interesting area where we use different chemicals for, uh, for uh, having different kinds of activity. One is the ethylene scavenger. We normally use potassium permanganate or activated carbon with a better catalyst to scavenge ethylene. Potassium permanganate is known to absorb ethylene from the atmosphere. So, we know that there is a problem of ethylene. If there is a high concentration of ethylene, it is going to rise very soon. So, we put a sachet of potassium permanganate into the packet so that it absorbs the additional uh, ethylene that is formed. A novel plastic based uh, ethylene scavenging technology developed by Food Science Australia, which they, what they use is they use ketrazine, and when ketrazine reacts with ethylene, it changes its color. Ketrazine is normally a uh, yellow color product, and when it is react with ethylene, it becomes colorless. So we know when and uh, when is the end of this scavenger that is used. Basically, we can identify that the product is not now going to uh, uh, going to be stable for uh, longer time because the ketrazine that we use to that we use for absorption of ethylene is now expired. So by changing the color, we can basically know the shelf life of the product is over. Another alternative approach is to use ethylene ethylene such as one methylene cyclopropyl. Now this is a very uh, wonder chemical. Uh, we say uh, one MCP is a chemical which basically can reduce ethylene concentration at a very, very low level. With very few micrograms of, uh, nanogram of uh, one density can give a, a very good result of ethylene absorption. The main function they do is they go and feed into the ethylene receptor uh, and stop the uh, stop signaling, stop perception of ethylene by the food. What happens, food is basically produces ethylene there are basically three strategies to control ethylene in, in, in fact. One is don't allow the community to come near ethylene. So you basically exclude ethylene from its environment. If we allow it, it is going to rise very soon. So first strategy is to uh, don't allow food to come in contact with ethylene. Second is don't allow the food to produce ethylene. And third is if at all ethylene is produced, don't allow the food to perceive it. Okay, so one MCP is basically acting on the third unit. Ethylene is produced by the plant, it is produced by the tissue, and it goes and sits on the receptor, which will start its action. Okay, once the ethylene, for, ethylene is produced, it goes and sits on the receptor molecule, and then the rest of the function starts. So what if one MCP does, it goes and sits onto the side, onto the chair where ethylene was supposed to be seated. So what happens when ethylene goes there, it does not find a seat and the rest of the chain does not happen. So there are three strategies and the one MCP walk on the third strategy. Optional scavenging. As we know, in very many food, oxygen is a very important uh, aspect, uh, important gas which basically deteriorates the product. It produces different kinds of off flavor. We, we have seen that if we expose uh, any kind of uh, fatty food or the oily food to air, they get uh, rancid, they become off flavor. Okay? So, well, oxygen, to avoid exposure of oxygen, we need to sometimes scavenge oxygen from the food atmosphere. So, that is what if, uh, the load of oxygen scavenger is in most cases ferrous oxide is the chemical used for used for oxygen scavenging. It absorbs the oxygen, gets converted to the ferric oxide, and the atmosphere becomes free of uh, free of uh, oxygen, and the oxygen oxidative damage to the product is basically avoided. Now this is again very important aspect of sulfur dioxide release. Sulfur dioxide, as I was talking about, uh, uh, immobilization of uh, immobilization of antimicrobial. Okay, sulfur dioxide is basically one of the antimicrobial used in many food, even in surface uh, sanitization of the fruit. Now, sulfur dioxide is basically obtained from sodium metamisulfide, 
Well, that principle is sodium uh, sulfur dioxide. Now, if we do sodium beta bisulfide into the product, it will start releasing uh, sulfur dioxide even at a concentration higher than that is required. So, we wanted to have a controlled release of sulfur dioxide so that the, uh, throughout the storage period of the uh, commodity, the sulfur dioxide level is maintained at a desired uh, level. Now, what we did is we uh, since since uh, uh, sodium metal sulfate, we sent sodium metal sulfate in between two polyfilms, so that that particular polyfilm is now regulating the release of sulfur dioxide from sodium metal sulfate. Now this this has this has done wonder in uh, many different industries. Now most of the grape packets come to scale. These are the same technology. These are the different manufacturers. One is this grape bean and one is this grape bean. You can see that uh, uh, the like, I mean, blister. So those are basically sodium beta sulfide. They are two layers of uh, rigid PVC. And what happens is they release a sulfur dioxide at a rate which is there. And that rate is there. Okay. So what happens is sulfur dioxide is released at a rate which is there. Now, if you are to use this uh, grape, which are, I mean, rotten when it, when it comes to just imagine 20 years back when grapes we used to consume the or purchase in the market, we used to grapes which are rotten or which are uh, not in the berry. It was not attached to the berry. It was not attached to the plant. So uh, we used to buy very very bad quality of uh, grapes. Nowadays you go almost garden sale grapes to get. That is what basically one of the uh, technologies that has uh, that has made this possible by using grape A. Right, they use the sodium beta sulfate in, uh, in this kind of package. Moisture and paper and This is again very interesting because in any kind of polymer, whatever we use any kind of polymer, because of plant transfer, it produces uh, water vapor. But why it goes? It stays because most of the polymer is not that much water vapor transfer. Not that much water vapor funnier. So what happens? It gets condensed onto the package, which looks bad, and because of the presence of high amount of water, my fingers fall down. So to avoid that, we have different technology. We can use sodium chloride. We can overlap between uh, one of the major uh, important uh, thing is that we can have different kinds of uh, sandwich and polyvinyl alcohol uh, film, and uh, we have. Uh, what is called is a uh, what one chemical we use, which is basically put inside the two packets. Now, see, there are two layers. One packet is which is water uh, water resistant, and the lower layer of that film it is a copolymer. It's not a copolymer basically. It is a sandwich where in between we use a chemical or what we call is the uh, what is called is uh, poly, uh, uh, vinyl alcohol, which is put inside these two uh, layers. And what happens? The lower layer is basically water vapor. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it can it can allow water vapor to pass through, but does not allow the water to pass. Through. So what happens? Water vapor goes in, get absorbed by the vinyl chloride, and but it, it, it gets condensed to the water, but cannot water cannot pass. Through. Water it passes water vapor, but water does, water does not come to that particular package. So why that way we can basically control humidity? Uh, it's just uh, in a package. Uh, lastly, uh, this is practically the last uh, thing we will be talking about. What is fluid permeability control? Now we have seen that we are using lot of polymers, right? Now these polymers they have their Permeability depending upon temperature, but there is very little variation in permeability of the film to a particular gas, be it carbon dioxide, be it oxygen. Now, if in a situation like India where the refrigeration transport is not available, during distribution, that temperature may go from 0, uh, 10 degrees to somewhat 40 degrees, somewhat 50 degrees. Anyway. Now, respiration rate at 10 degrees is is not going to, uh, if I design the package for a, uh, for a product which
which is at 10 degrees centigrade, then estrogen rate is much lower. But at 40 degrees centigrade, it is four times more than that. Four or five times more than the, the one that is at 10 degrees centigrade. So the respiration rate as it increases, there is a further requirement for carbon dioxide to release out of the packet and oxygen into the packet to sustain that respiration rate. So we need to have a more porous film at 40 degrees centigrade than at 10 degrees centigrade. Now what do we do? There are films, there are films where we can use some side linkage, like say uh, one example is polyethyl brachamide, we call it PEBAA. This particular film is the supporting material on which we use polyethylene glycol. Polyethylene glycol is a, uh, what we call is a uh, phase change material. We call it a phase change material which it changes its weight at different uh, temperatures. Now, similarly, like PEG, polyethylene uh, glycol, we have many other materials which basically change its weight at different temperatures. Now, what we did is PEBAA is now put into uh, food along with PEG to form a composite. It is again a solution passing mechanism where different different uh, different molecular weight of PEG was used. Now, different molecular weight like here we have seen there are four different levels. One is pure PEBAX, where there is no PE. Then there is a lower PEBXPG, which basically have a PEG side chain, which have a molecular weight of say around 1000, 1000 carbon. And in case of middle, uh, PBXPG, it has something a molecular weight of around say 30, 30, uh, 3350 carbon. And in case of last one, it is 8. Hi, PBXPG, it has a molecular weight of the PEG side chain has a molecular weight of around 33,000 gadgets. So we use the material, we prepared material, which is not definitely not my work, they prepared a material of different uh, composite with different molecular weight PEG. So what happens? The low XPG instead of the second one, that's the red one. It has a molecular damage, it is started. I mean, what happened when PEG made basically there is a change, I mean, there is an increase in temperature, so there is a change in case of the PEG. So, when the, when the uh, PEG in crystalline state or the solid state, it basically they, the, the side states are internally and the pores are dropped. But when the temperature reaches at the, say, you can say, the uh, melting point, what happens? That they become now amorphous and they open they open the chain. The intensity becomes limited, and so the, the porosity of the material becomes increased. So in that way, you can see, in case of the last one, after 60 degrees centigrade, there is an increase, high increase in the porosity of the material. Now once it is more permeable, it it, it will be able to withstand high rate of dispersion rate. This kind of material can be used, can be, can be different, weight chain material can be used in different proportions to have higher porosity or uh, very high porosity in different, uh, I mean, in different polymer. So to handle, so as to handle different kinds of, uh, different kinds of commodity and different kinds of uh, temperature. So this is again the uh, ACM structure of that particular uh, material. You can see these are the these are two very uh, rough materials that is the HPBX uh, and PEBAX, pure PEBAX. They are very rough structures, whereas these two are very smooth. Now, this kind of material can be used, can be taken uh, taken into research for further uh, improvement. Certainly, this technology is used in case of drag delivery, but in case of food or processed vegetables, these are not being used in uh, much, uh, I mean, uh, much extent. So this can be a future technology which will be able to uh, handle modified atmosphere packaging, particularly in countries like India, where the cold chain uh, or the cold chain or the radiated uh, distribution system is not available. With this basically, I will uh, complete this area. Before I complete this, I just uh, want to uh, congratulate the organizer for organizing as a nice seminar. And uh, inviting me to visit here to deliver this particular talk. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
question from the participants? Anyone? Any question? Hello. Sir, you have seen that your second slide, horticulture is the capture or agriculture part of 33%. And how it is and what is horticulture, please clarify that. I got you. Basically, total GDP of the agricultural sector, 33% is contributed by the horticulture crop. Out of total GDP of agriculture, what was the GDP of that 33% is contributed by horticulture. मार्केटिंग <laughs> Potassium permanent definitely a better option 
lukewarm water and then it has to be consumed uh, or it has to be scrapped. Like we do normally in Chetama. So it's not, it's, it's basically Vishnu uh, water, nothing else. Thank you, sir. Any last question? So we congratulate and thank uh, Mr. Pradeep Kumar Pal for having such a wonderful session. Thank you again, Dr. Pal and all our dignitaries for being present in this uh, auditorium for today's national seminar. So now we will be moving for a short lunch break of half an hour. So first I would ask our volunteers to please show the way to our delegates to the lunch hall. Participants, please be seated. Volunteers, please show the way to lunch hall. We have many more sessions after the lunch and after lunch we will be directly moving to the poster presentation of the hall that is in the second floor. Our volunteers will guide you to the poster presentation hall and poster presentation uh, participants please be ready with your posters uh, after the short lunch break. Participants, please uh, for your lunch go to drawing hall 2 on first floor 207 and 209. Please move quietly and in a queue. We used to have the option to put the page at. We used to have the option to put the page at. 